This week in Nerf, we've got a blaster release, wheels, and a long shot kit. I'm Jangler, and every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right on into it, let's talk about the blaster release. This is the FDL3. Now, we have talked about the FDL3 when they did the pre orders a little while back to get the first 20 out into the wild to help test and refine and get things ready for the launch, which has happened now. So if you want an FDL3, you've been interested in one, they are available through the Project FDL website. Uh, they are starting at $409 US, and then you can add things like custom hydro dipping, uh, logos, words on the plates, holster panels, all kinds of stuff you can add to these blasters. And there's been a lot of nice changes. I've got to mess around with one of the pre-order uh, models of the FDL3, and there's a lot to like about it. Uh, they've changed the form factor and other aspects of it, along with making the preset buttons very easily accessible. So there's a lot going on in this, though in terms of raw performance, like FPS and things like that, it is somewhat similar to the FDL2X. So it doesn't quite obsolete it, but it's more of an adjacent or small upgrade in terms of uh, things like comfort and aesthetics and uh, feeling generally, because it's got the nice switch for the trigger. There's some things I really like about this blaster. So uh, I'm curious to see what people are gonna think as they kind of spread out more and more and get into more players' hands and are seen on more fields all over the world. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing uh, what happens with it. So let me know if you're planning on getting one, if you've already placed your order, or what your thoughts are in general on the FDL3 as a platform. But let's go ahead and move on to our next topic, which comes from Orange Modworks. Now, Orange Modworks has recently switched to a crowdfunding style for their projects, for their products, and this is no exception. This is their hybrid system for a long shot, and it's a system that shoots both short length and full length darts and utilizes their core components and things like that with a custom breach and all that kind of stuff. It's definitely something interesting and it's another option on the market, which you know I'm very much a fan of. Uh, some of the things that have me questioning a little bit though is that for those of you that want to run a really, really beefy spring load, uh, the plunger tube doesn't actually fully contain the spring. Instead, the spring rests upon nubs in the shell and uses that to compress the spring, which is one of my chief concerns. Um, so we'll see now, there's some other things here and there that in the video uh, they encounter and talk about them being you know, pre-production models and having issues because they're just prototypes that they're testing. So I, I kind of let that slide because they've acknowledged it and they know that those things need to be remedied for the actual product. But it, it's an interesting system. Now I'm not the most knowledgeable person when it comes to Springer mods or long shot mods. So, I don't know if this is going to be as much of a problem as it seems to me with the spring resting on the shell nubs itself, but I'm sure some of you out there that are more versed in this than I will let me know and let everyone else know down in the comments your thoughts on this system and how it works. Now it's going to be $60 through their crowdfunding platform Project Orange and you only get charged if the product is successfully funded. So you can say, yes, I'd like one of these, and if it doesn't get funded, you're not out your money. So that's at least good there. Um, but I'm still kind of uh, very curious on this whole Project Orange platform for crowdfunding and things like that, and how it's going to do in the long term. But regardless, that's the new product that they are looking at releasing right now or working on to release right now. So definitely go check that out if you wanna see what it's all about. They've got a video showing the installation, all the parts, uh, FPS testing, and all of that good stuff. So let's talk about something, uh, kind of a follow-up on last week. Last week we talked about the two different kinds of katana mags. One of them was the Vorpal Mag from Coat Duck, and one of them was the Katobu from Tobu. And uh, this is a follow-up of the Katobu. This is a Kabana released by Tobu and uh, Colin Wood. They've been working on a banana version of a short dart magazine, and this is what they came up with. It utilizes the same follower and I believe base plate as the Katobu mag, so those are interchangeable. You can kind of uh, use that as the base, and they have varying different sizes, I believe up to 30 dart capacity, which is, that's significant. 
that's 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 a that's a long mag. That is that is a long mag. I don't know how uh, how much I'd want to run that in a game, but it's one of those things. I'm sure. Can we do it? We can, let's do it. So I'm sure someone will run it and it'll be fun to see on the field. But that is now another option for you available there on Thingiverse if you wanna print, download, and all of that and uh, test them out. Again, I still need to get my hands on all of these different magazines to test them uh, versus the standard Katana mag to see how they perform. So let me know which one of these you think is gonna be your favorite or what you would like to see more of in terms of short dart magazines. We have one more thing to talk about this week before we get into our modern video of the week. And that comes from Open Flywheel Project. These are the Phoenix wheels. Last week we talked about the uh, Aurora cage and now we have the Phoenix wheels. These wheels are similar to the Riot wheels that they worked on a while back. Uh, they are fairly large, actually rather large, with 37.5 millimeters in outer diameter, which means they won't fit in a lot of cages. They'll fit in open flywheel cages like the Serenity, the Aurora, Morpheus, uh, all those cages it should work fine in, but just be aware and be advised that if you don't have a large enough wheel well, these won't fit. Uh, so I've already placed my order for a pair. I'm looking forward to testing them and seeing how they do. They are a bit more concave. I believe it's something like 34.25 millimeters for the uh, inner diameter. So it's, it's a decent, decent concavity. Uh, and I'm curious to see what it does with darts. So I'll let you know when I get my hands on them and let me know what you think about these wheels in particular. Uh, but that said, let's go ahead. Actually, actually, sorry, before we move on, let you know that these are going to be available through Open Flywheel Project themselves, uh, out of darts and blaster tech, and they're going to be retailing for $16 US. That's what I wanted to not forget. We got there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the mod of the week. This week, it comes to us from Elliot Drury, and this is a direct plunger quick 16. This is just so cool to me. Uh, I saw this scrolling through, and I just thought, I love the idea of taking something older that maybe didn't get a whole lot of love, like some people really enjoyed it, but it wasn't like a massive success, and then kind of reworking it for super stock or kind of closer to today's game standards. And uh, this is just cool. Like, I like that you can see the spring jutting out the plunger tube in the back through to a stock, and it just looks cool. In previous iterations, the uh, internal magazine of the Quick 16 was still intact. Uh, he has since removed it to be able to pop a regular 18 in there. I believe it was feeding better with the regular 18. So sure, a little bit of a bummer that it doesn't maintain the full Quick 16 aesthetic, but still cool to see this old blaster kind of reworked uh, to get a little bit of limelight uh, in today's standard of super stock gameplay. So that was cool. Go check it out. I'll have linked in all, down below to the Instagram post with some video of it firing. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a cool one. I, I just enjoy seeing creative, fun, interesting things like this. For this week's video of the week, I want to talk about Boba Lolo's five things I wish modders would stop doing. I thought this was a really interesting watch and added some interesting topics for discussion, as I really like having those kinds of discussions and seeing where people are at and how we can continue to improve. And there's one point in particular in this video that I really, really liked and really wanted to emphasize, and uh, gatekeeping is the is the topic at hand on this one. I'm not gonna go into my whole soapbox platform on this one. I'm gonna let Bobo talk about it. So please go check that one out down, out down below. Uh, it's also gonna be right over here in just a minute as we get to the end of this video, uh, but definitely go watch that. And to everyone watching this video, I just wanna say thank you so much for your support, whether you're watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, or supporting on Patreon. Thank you each and every one of you for being here to watch this video. And I hope you got something interesting out of today's episode. Uh, if you have something you think I should take a look at, definitely leave a comment down below or shoot me an email. And if you're new to the channel, you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for one of the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.